Um, I find myself being more God reliant, but I very notice myself going back to being self reliant and trying to figure things out in my head. How do you stay God reliant twenty four seven? Well, every time you get back into your head, it's because you're not allowing yourself to feel what's in your emotions generally, isn't it? Like, like we get into our head because we don't, we can't work out what's going on emotionally, right? So what I try to do in that moment is rather than trying to get into my head and try to work it all out, I try to settle back into my heart again and feel what it's all about and also feel my feelings towards God of wanting. Do I really want to know the answer of what this is about? And most of the time I find out, no, I didn't want the answer. You know, Most of the time I wanted to completely reject the answer and push it away from me and not know it. And then I start looking at the reasons why. And I, and I ask God to actually show me through my law of attraction and through these events that are happening in my life why it is that I want to reject it. And in almost every case I come up with a fear of some kind that I have to first process through, which I've termed to you a block, a blocking emotion. And, and then I've worked my way through that blocking emotion emotionally and then as soon as I do that the underlying emotion comes through and, I get, and, and it's released. But in all that process I find if I ask somebody else, often I get a whole convoluted thing of happening where lots of people give me different advice and different things and most of them don't resonate with me and each one of them has a tendency to get me out of the process of working away through the block itself and then working my way through the emotion. So, so my feelings are, you know the principles involved with the layers of emotions and uh, like you've been taught them in the sense that uh, in terms of intellectually, now give them a try emotionally, like put them into practice emotionally. See how it goes in your day-to-day -day life. See how you go practicing it. Put it into practice, see what happens. And what you'll find will happen is, uh, is that you will come to the emotional truth of what you intellectually know, and not only that, you will quickly resolve problems that you're facing in your day-to-day -day life. And so, so it's not a process of having to trust somebody else now to tell me what's going on. Right? I don't have to go to somebody and say, can you tell me what's going on? I can't work it out again. And because I'm always going to God and saying, actually, I know God, you're trying to already tell me what's going on. Like, you love me all the time and you're already trying to tell me what's going on and the problem I have is that I don't, I'm not listening. <laughs> so can you show me the area in which I'm not listening. What's going on here? And then over the next week you'll find all sorts of events occur showing you exactly what the problem is. And if you're taking personal responsibility for every one of those events, it will soon be explained to, exposed to you what's really going on inside of yourself. And that's the power of the Divine Love Path in the end. The power of the path is that it makes you totally reliant on God and totally in a place of self-responsibility and it takes away the middleman. The middleman being the teacher, the guru, the avatar, the, 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 the Indian fellow you visit three, four times a year or whatever it is that you, that you do. It takes away that because that, you don't need that person. Right? All you need is this connection with God to learn truth. And so um, that's the only way I've learnt truth my entire life and every single person on the planet and in the spirit world can practice exactly the same thing. And it just depends totally on how passionate your desire is to find out the truth about a matter as to how rapidly that truth will come to you. And that's the beauty of it. So I would just like to encourage everyone to take personal responsibility in their life and in particular for your relationship with God. Desire the truth passionately and take responsibility for that, like that your desire for truth. Want God in your face 24-7 telling you truth. You know, want that. And, and when you've got an opportunity to get that from somebody else, get that as, get that as well. Like, I desire this truth in your face being confronted with it all the time. Because if, that, if you stay in this space, what will happen is you'll progress as rapidly as you can working your way through different issues. Of course you can see that you're going to have to be very, very humble. 
to do that. Can you see that? Like, you're going to have to be so humble that you're willing to listen to a little child reflecting an emotion at you to see what you're actually getting stuck on. You have to be so humble that if you've got a little baby like one years of age, you're going to have to feel what it's crying about and know what's going on inside of yourself that's creating it. You have to be so humble that when your little three-year-old comes up and yells and screams at you, you don't give it a tap on the backside anymore. You actually feel your own emotional response to what's going on. And when your teenager comes up and tells you they hate your guts and you're a terrible mother, you actually go through all of the emotion of that. You have to be so humble that you allow yourself to go through all of that. And when your husband comes along and tells you that he's sick and tired of coming home to a dirty house, you have to actually own your emotion there and go through and own and take personal responsibility for this creation that you've got there as well. And when your work, you get fired from work, instead of ranting and raving at them, you need to look at your own emotion and law of attraction regarding abundance and money and all these other factors that are still unhealed within yourself. And when somebody comes along and steals $50,000 from you in a bank rort or some kind of credit union scam or whatever, you're going to have to, instead of yelling and screaming at them and blaming them and trying to take them to court, own your own emotions about that and what happened inside of you and how, that, how you created that. And then when you break your leg through the car accident, you're going to have to do the same. And then when you're also go, uh, 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 driving along in a, uh, in, in a bus that somebody else owns and all of a sudden he swerves and crosses the road and hits another vehicle and all of a sudden you get thrown into the seat in front and break your back, you're going to have to own that as well. Right? And then on top of that, if that's not enough, right? you're going to have to own every single thing that blocks you from receiving God's love. Because God is just there right next to you waiting to give you love and the only thing stopping it from happening is your own self, your own will in some way. And you'll have to own all of that as well. And when you're prepared to own everything that much, you'll find your life also becomes ironically a joy to live. Because now everything that happens in your life is your creation. Now that means every really good thing that happens in your life you feel really proud about because that's also something that was created because of what you did bringing yourself into harmony with God's laws and love. So while God's love entering you transforms you, you have got to be a participant in the process. You've got to take personal responsibility for whether you have a pure longing for that love or not. And if you don't take personal responsibility for it, what will happen is God's love will not flow into you until you do. And it's as simple as that in our own progression. So hopefully that's given you some ideas. And the reason why I uh, talked about this subject is very shortly Mary will be starting a course of workshops and many of you have enrolled in some of those workshops and one of the things that you'll find that Mary talks about, well Mary's, Mary will be talking about a lot of different things, but the three primary things that we've discussed in all of our discussions with you, Mary will be demonstrating to you as far as she can in practice a whole set of principles to help you access those three things, which are humility, a longing for truth and a longing for love. And of course if you don't take personal responsibility when you go along to one of these workshops, you can go through all the things that Mary takes you through and the group of helpers that are with her take you through and, and come out the other end none the wiser. Right? Or you can take personal responsibility for what you're about to receive and look at what's going on and really look at this as an opportunity to spend, what is it, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 hours or whatever it is, 15 hours? Yeah, 15 hours of time with, with six or seven people in your face trying to give you truth. Which is really what they're trying to do is help you come to the state of seeing that God is actually in your face 24 by 7 trying to give you truth. And, and you can feel all of your resistance to it and you can feel all the times you don't want to take personal responsibility and you want to weasel out of it, you know, and you want to get out of it and give it to somebody else, all this personal, you want to make someone else responsible. Or, you know, nothing's happening for me, nothing's happening for me in the course. Well, if nothing's happening for you, where's the personal responsibility there? If nothing's happening for you, what have you created there? Can you see? 
allow yourself to actually go through those things emotionally. So I thought if I could talk to you about personal responsibility, that may assist you in this process of opening up more and more to God and seeing this as your personal relationship with God, not AJ's cult that he's trying to create, as what other people might think. This is your personal relationship with God and all I'm trying to do is help you have it by telling you some truths about it, that's all. And my personal responsibility is only for my relationship with God and I am not responsible for anyone else's relationship with God. But I do have a passion to show you how to have one with God if you want to know. That's why I'm here. So thanks for your time again tonight.